Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of A Little Atypical. My name is Leja, you can call me Lay. And this week, I am honestly so excited about the theme of the week is celebration, milestones, and of course a sprinkle of self-love in this conversation because I was kind of just thinking of the best way to transition my topics because since the month is ending, we are finally getting out of our getting our ish together era because that was pretty much the theme of the month and everything else that I talked about in January were just subtopics. And as much as I loved talking about productivity, motivation and all that stuff I'm so excited to kind of shift the conversation a little bit because even though yes I am the one who planned out my content calendar and everything just for the sake of consistency I'm actually excited to get into more fun topics at least for me obviously if you saw the title of this video as you know, the lifestyle design video always goes up first, but what we're talking about in this podcast is kind of why constantly looking for the next thing is ruining our mental health. I don't know if I'll change the title to be something a little more positive, but the reason why I wanted to talk about this so bad, honestly, I'm just like sitting down thinking about like making my motivation board for the next month and just like little things. But I'm also thinking about reflecting on the month and what I learned about myself this month and to really just appreciate the growth I've had. Because in the past, celebrating my wins has always been something that was personally hard for me. But I do think that celebrating your wins is a part of a self-love journey that not enough people talk about. Because when I say celebrating small wins, it's a little different than the treat yourself mentality. Because when I say it, I'm talking specifically about recognizing and learning how to be present with your growth. I always had a hard time with this because it took a lot for me to get to the point where I am and how I do love myself and respect myself now. But I can't say the same for when I was younger. I can't say that I loved myself back then. And even when I started to be neutral with myself, I still struggled with this of really being proud of myself. I don't know if it was the fact that it feels uncomfortable to be proud of yourself, that it feels self-centered in a way. And maybe that's why I struggled with it. But I also listed some other reasons about why we're constantly worrying about the next thing whenever we accomplish something. I think that a lot of it has to do with, in a sense, our culture. Our culture as a society is very busy and we mistake busyness for productivity. You're probably listening to this like, what's the difference? I talked a lot about productivity last week And I actually still have some more content about productivity to put up. The real difference between being productive and being busy is whether the thing you're doing aligns with your values and what you're aiming for. Because not every action you do is necessarily productive. And I'm not saying everything you do have to be productive. But I am saying that to be productive is to do the things that add to your life in the sense of becoming the most idealistic version of me. 
Because I do think we burn ourselves out trying to be busy because we see people doing all these things. But if we don't necessarily care about it, it's not going to feel like a win regardless. Let's say like you graduated and you got a degree. That's a win, right? But if you got it in something that you didn't really want to do in the first place, you're probably not as excited about it. You're probably thinking like, oh, okay, so I got this degree. Now I need to find a job that needs to make it work while that I did all this. So that's why it's important to really understand what is important for you because then you'll start to overlook the things you accomplish because you it wasn't meaningful for you in the first place. In addition to that, I feel like the next reason why we're constantly worrying about what's next is honestly fear. But the type of fear I really thought of was the first one obviously being the fear of being perceived and basically how it would look to people if you acknowledge your wins that they would label you as selfish or self-centered because I think that's the reason most people are kind of afraid to go on their self-love journey and everything like that is because they're afraid of how people would react to them on top of that how it would look if you accomplished something and you didn't have an answer for when someone asks you like oh now that you did this what are you going to do next because I feel like even people kind of push that on us that we don't just get to enjoy the moment that it's constantly, what are you doing next? What are you doing next? Because even that happened for me once I graduated from college. It was always, oh, you graduated college, congratulations. So what are you doing now that you're graduated? And it's like, why can't I just have a moment to figure that out? With certain jobs, you do need a degree to get in the field, right? So I did what I needed to do. But it's just the fact where I wasn't even sure about it because when you're in high school, they push you to choose a college, choose a major. And I'm not one of the people who like switched it a lot because also I didn't want to switch it a lot considering how I was getting funded for college. So that wasn't really an option for me. And I was afraid like, oh, if I switched my major too many times, that I wouldn't be able to afford to continue with schooling. So I barely changed my major. I did switch majors, but that's because the program I was in, it was a two plus two program. So when we apply to the school, we have to apply for an associate's degree and then we get a bachelor's degree if we decide like, oh, like after two years, we'll continue on learning and you can continue with what you got your associates in or you can switch programs. It's your choice. And I switched programs because I felt like the major I was in was feeling too easy. It wasn't challenging me enough. I was just bored. And then I got into this major that was very selective and yeah it was enjoyable but I was already kind of annoyed because I was having a hard time adjusting I just couldn't enjoy the moment and couldn't enjoy the wins I had while doing the program I actually have anxiety over this that I'm not working in the field I got my degree in And I think a lot of people do experience that, especially if their major wasn't something with as clear of a path because you weren't aiming to do something practical. Like, for example, if you know you want to be a lawyer, you know going into pre-law, then going to law school pretty much after getting your four years in, 
or just however long it takes you to get your bachelor's. And it's also you understand the process of taking like the test you need and all those things. And same, it's kind of similar with being a doctor, like you know your process. But when you're doing something like business, it's a lot different where you have so many options, but the biggest part about business, and I know people are gonna be laughing because everyone makes fun of business majors, but anyways, is the most important aspect of that is networking. And if you're an introvert like me, that aspect is not my strongest suit. Without me having, I would say like an extroverted personality to really develop my network, because if I am going into that field, that is a part of it. When I had to tell people, I don't know what's next for me, because then I wasn't even sure if I did what was right for me in the first place, because we have like all this pressure to choose so early on. Moving on in our fear, I would say is the fear of your growth would stop if you acknowledge you accomplish something because I think some people get worried that they have a fear of growing too comfortable. Once they acknowledge and celebrate that, they'll get too comfortable with it. So they push themselves to keep looking for something else so they don't become stagnant. And to add on to that is a fear that you would regress instead of going forward. Because sometimes, like, when you win, like I said, it's either you become stagnant, where that becomes, like, your comfort zone now, and you get worried about that, or that you kind of regress. Like, let's say your goal was to become healthier. Your goal was, okay, trigger warning, I'm gonna use a weight loss example, but let's say your goal was to lose a certain amount of weight. Like, let's get, say... 10 pounds right and you start seeing results and then because you're starting to be okay with where you're at that you stop doing what you're doing and then you go back to square one because you fall back into your old habits and I think a lot of people have that fear that they can't trust themselves to acknowledge where they're at and the very last reason I think that we're constantly worrying about the future is because people often look for tangible signs of success even though a lot of those things are in my eyes status symbols I feel like people look towards people with big houses nice cars they look at If a person has a lot of views or likes, they look at how many people want to date that person and see those as tangible things that the person is doing well or successful or attractive or whatever phrase we're going for. But I do think that when we're aiming for a goal, that there are some things that are just not measurable and not able to see and like for example if you feel happier and you wake up in a better mood like that's not something you can measure that easily like maybe you can count how many days you wake up in a better mood but I'm talking more so about the feeling more so about if you're more energized about the things that people can't see. So I think it ruins our mental health to always be looking for the next thing. And even now, I'm still learning how to be more present as a person with pretty bad anxiety because usually people with anxiety tend to look towards the future a lot. And I'm still learning my own toolkit but I want to share some exercises that I thought of or have done 
to really recenter myself and to be more present about things in my life, especially with things that I don't want to miss in my growth journey. One thing I do, this one I've done a couple of times, and it was an exercise I learned when I was kind of in my healing era, but it's kind of a tactic to use your five senses. When you start overthinking and your mind is racing, to bring yourself back to where you are, kind of do it based on like five, four, three, two, one. So name five objects you see, name four sounds you hear, name three things you can feel, and so on. You can mix them up, I guess. Essentially, the goal is to use your five senses in order to remind yourself where exactly you are and to stop, I guess, overthinking about the next thing. And I feel like this could be a very useful tool in general. The next thing is, I would say, pretend you're updating your past self about the things that are happening in your life because especially if you had a point of self-hatred i feel like that's a good place like if you were talking to the younger version of you that was experiencing that like in my case it would be me at i would say 13 14 years old and i would tell myself like how all the things i thought and all the things i think now are different I would tell them how we grew, how we like ourselves now, how we appreciate things, the type of relationships I have now, about the things that I appreciate more about life. And I feel like that would be so healing to your inner child and it really would help you be more present and remind yourself like from that point you've grown so much. And I really think it would ground you to be more present and able to celebrate your wins. And the last suggestion is celebrating your wins in the sense of like having a journal page called You're Doing Great Sweetie. Like if you get the reference, I love you. But just having a page like of all your accomplishments and little things no matter how big no matter how small just have a page dedicated to your wins and if you don't want to do the journal thing have a jar for every month where you can just like change out the little prompts but have a little jar that you put like little things you accomplished and you can call your like ta-da jar like something cute like that you can decorate it and just have like the little things you accomplished in that jar. That is all for today. I really hope this makes a lot of sense because I also feel very sleep deprived. <laughs> sleep is still like my number one enemy when it comes to my health journey because I want to get better sleep, but every single time at the end of the month, it gets disturbed because of my um, menstrual cycle. Like I was doing like really well, then I was sleeping a lot. Then because I was sleeping a lot, lot, it messes up my sleep at night. So for the past two weeks, my sleep has not been good. But anyways, for the card pull of the episode, I actually used the Spirit Animal deck and we got the Oyster. And I just thought getting the oyster was so cute because it says like the focus and determination of the oyster is unmatched. Anything an oyster personality puts their mind to, they achieve with grace and charm. The only problem is oyster types take their inner gifts for granted. They become shy or doubtful and this can lead to withdrawing or protecting protecting their deepest desires or a life's work. When the oyster card appears, it's important to reveal your inner treasures. What is it you've been hesitant to share? The world is waiting to see. 
So I thought this was a great card for this episode since we're talking so deeply about wins and celebrating yourself and to do so proudly and not feel shamed when you are celebrating yourself. It is not selfish. It is not self-centered. And you can feel happy about no matter how big or how small it is. Even if it's as simple as getting out of bed, that is such a win if you were struggling to do that. If the win is to finally cut off people after being a longtime people pleaser, that is absolutely amazing. And you're allowed to think that even if it seems like something that should be should have been something you were trying before at least you're doing it now at least you're making progress okay so with that being said i need to get to my maintenance day and give my voice a rest but what i am grateful for currently is this weekend where i got to spend time with my mom and how we went shopping we had a good time I had Indian food, I got my taro milk tea, I got the Auntie Anne's almond pretzels, which is, by the way, the best ones, and I'm just grateful that I took the time to do that because I felt so much better, so much more refreshed because I haven't really went out in months. I've been, like, when I say I've been in solitude and in hermit mode, that is exactly what I mean. Because I don't go out often and it's really hard for me for multiple reasons, but I'm glad I finally left my house, which I haven't done since maybe November. Have a good day, evening, or night whenever you're listening to this. I hope this helps you in some shape or form and if you're watching on youtube please don't forget to like comment and subscribe if you're listening on spotify thank you so much and be sure to make your way to youtube because that's where we have other content we have the lifestyle design videos open one letters i know i need to get back to doing those but yeah it's a good time over there that is all and bye